the National Workers' Union has had uh, an interesting experience in organising workers at non-destructive testers. This is a company in South Trinidad. I suspect our experience has been typical of many unions and many workers that have tried to organise. Um, to start off with, of course, the workers have been a bit cautious about how they joined the union, but we were successful in finding a number of um, activists there, about four altogether, who gradually recruited other workers into the union. And this seems to be the key, really, to any organising. You can't stand outside factories and hand out flyers. You have to find people inside who are prepared to do the organising. Now, the response from the employer has, of course, been interesting, that all four activists have, one by one, gradually been dismissed. Of course, they haven't been dismissed officially for joining a trade union or for undertaking trade union activities. They've all been made redundant. Um, one of the key activists actually was working for the company for 18 years, and yet he was still made redundant, and it's quite clear that he is not the most recent employee. So we know exactly what's going on. Um, now, all of those matters are currently at the Ministry of Labour, and so we're processing those. And that in itself is a pretty slow process, uh, which can be very frustrating. Of course, in the old days, before the Industrial Stabilisation Act, workers could have taken action to defend their organisers and their trade union representatives. Uh, the law makes that uh, very difficult at the moment. Now, what the union's also done is to apply for recognition. We have recruited more than 50%, well over 50% of the workers into the union, and we have applied for recognition. Now, there's another little nightmare that the legislation has set for trade unions, and it takes a long time for recognition to get processed. To start off with, the uh, union makes an application, and we have to establish that we have 50% of the workers, or more than 50% in membership, and we have to have them in membership for more than eight weeks, and of course we have achieved that. But the first step is to try and sort out what the shape of the bargaining unit is. Now, for that to happen, the recognition board needs to have some cooperation from the employer. And the first response we've had from this employer, so we understand from the recognition board, is that the employer is not replying to any letters. And of course that contributes to delaying the process, which of course is, is why employers do that. Now the National Workers Union has been very clear in saying that there needs to be a major shake-up at the recognition board. We think the current recognition procedures are well outdated. Unions ought to be able to get recognition at the very least within three months. And it shouldn't take as long as that even. And so we have actually asked for meetings with the recognition board to try and identify ways in which we could speed this up. Firstly, we think that there ought to be time limits by which the employers must reply, and they should be fairly short. And if the employers don't reply, then the process should continue in their absence. We think that there should be interim bargaining units uh, certificates given. There's provision in the law for that, and it's never been done in the 30 or so years that the Industrial Relations Act has been in existence. And we think that there should be consultation uh, with the employer about how bargaining units are established. Because at the moment, uh, a, a, an officer from the recognition board talks to the union, goes back and talks to the employer, comes back and talks to the union. It's a lot better if we can do some face-to-face -face work. Now, although we're very critical of the recognition board, the fact is the Industrial Relations Act only has two legal requirements. One is that the union has to have more than 50% of the workers in membership. And secondly, that the uh, workers have to be in the union for at least eight weeks. Other than that, the recognition board has actually got a very wide remit on how it addresses recognition questions. And what we're trying to do is to get the trade union movement to mobilise and put pressure on the recognition board so we could short-circuit some, uh, some of these processes that they have at the moment. If you look at the history of the recognition board, in the early days when it was set up, right back in 1972, it was possible for unions to get recognition within about three months. As the recession hit, and less and less applications for recognition were made to the recognition board, so the length of time it took the recognition board was longer and longer and longer. On average, at the peak, it was about two years. In fact, there have been some extreme examples of AMOCO and other union applications that have really never, ever successfully gone through. 
Now, there's no reason why these applications should take that long. As far as we can see, it was largely job creation by the recognition board, making it more detailed, more complicated, trying to turn it into an art form of its own. Union recognition is very clear. Without union recognition, workers don't have rights. Once we have recognition, we needn't worry about a lot of other things. We can sort out minimum wages once we have the strength. We can sort out pay, we can sort out productivity, we can sort out retrenchment issues, we can sort out a whole bunch of things once we get recognition. So that's the key to it. So what we're doing at NDT is pushing the employer, we're pushing the recognition board, and we're very confident that at the end of the day, national uh, non-destructive testers will be an organised employer and we'll then start tackling issues like safety and wages and other matters that the workers need to have addressed on their benefit.